Indy and I have traveled to Atlanta, Indiana, and tonight we are here at the Asher Walton House. The home had numerous deaths in the Walton family. My heart's like beating a miles an hour. It's creepy. We've experienced many, many things while staying here. We hear footsteps upstairs, children laughing. If there's anyone here, we just would like to talk with you tonight, if that's okay. All right, I gotta stop for a second. We had a glow balloon, and it was sitting at the top of the stairs. And sure enough, that balloon came rolling on down the steps. On a quiet street in the sleepy town of Atlanta, Indiana, you'll find a home that looks as though it was plucked straight from the pages of a classic ghost story. And if it's paranormal tales you seek, the Asher Walton House is well known for its cast of characters from beyond the grave. To hear some of the chilling tales for ourselves, we met with Keith and Jess, who have spent much of their time inside the walls of this stunning historic home. Welcome to the Asher Walton House in Atlanta, Indiana. Uh, I'm Keith Fournier. Uh, I am the uh, founder and uh, president of uh, Paranormal Dares. And along with me is my wonderful wife. I'm Jessica Marie Angel, and I manage the Asher Walton House. Right now we're standing in um, the drawing, drawing room. room of the Asher Walton House. Uh, to give you a little bit of history, the house was built in 1868. Uh, it took four years to build. It was built by Mr. Asher Walton for his wife, Julia Walton, uh, as a wedding gift right after their marriage. As I said, it took four years to build, and the reason was that the woodwork and the craftsmanship was not yet uh, popular here in the United States and he wanted things built a certain way. So he actually brought over workers from Germany and Belgium to put in the Belgian fireplaces and to do the type of woodwork that he wanted. The house is filled with solid hardwoods. Some of the woodwork in the home is actually six layers thick. Some of the walls in the house are actually six to seven inches thick. Uh, it's built like a fortress and it's all still original inside. Uh, some things have been changed over the years, but it's pretty much the way it was in 1868. Now, the house over the years has been in the Walton family for three generations. It was sold as a private residence several times. It's been a bed and breakfast two times over the years and stayed a bed and breakfast for a couple years each time and then fell kind of into disarray, was sold to the current owner who has owned it uh, for over 10 years now and actually just used it for storage. The haunted history of this house goes back well over 100 years, both with the local townspeople and the residents that lived here. Stories from our very own city hall, people seeing things from the outside of the home and people experiencing them inside the home. The home had numerous deaths in the Walton family. People from the Walton family died in the home and uh, the History is a little bit sketchy when it's sold as private residence. We're not sure about deaths during that time period, but we do know that uh, the Waltons were a very respected family, so much so that this very room we're standing in was actually used as a showing room or funeral parlor uh, back in the day. So there was many local people that, that had their loved ones that were actually shown and the bodies were kept here in the house. Now, uh, the home, we do rent out the home. Jessica rents out the home. Yeah, we rent it out to teams and um, groups that want to come overnight and investigate. They've heard from rumor and everything else that, you know, this place is pretty active and they have, they've seen it for themselves. <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot of things. Uh, we don't actually live here in the home. 
uh, we live nearby, but uh, we've experienced many, many things while staying here. Uh, obviously the home has been redone several times over the years. Now we use this room as a living room. And um, just in this room alone, we've caught SLS footage, voices. Um, yeah, and there's even, there's even been times where a team has um, come and they've invited us just to tag along. They had me sitting out and repeatedly you could see this small stick figure on an SLS camera that always loves to come into this room for whatever reason and um, interact, just constantly interacting. So that's, that's something we mm -hmm. get quite often in here. Yeah, late at night, mm -hmm. uh, sitting in this room, uh, sometimes watching TV, we stay over here. We hear footsteps upstairs, children laughing. It running, sounds like playing, oh my goodness, running all uh, night Running long. all night. <laughs> we do keep um, some paranormally active items in the house, and they're things that Jess and I have collected over the years of being on the road and doing events. We have uh, some dolls in here that are said to carry some energy. Uh, when we say it carries energy, we basically our um, instruments and stuff, our REM pods and K2 meters and everything will go off, you know, whenever we're asking questions. We've caught, again, on the SLS camera, stuff from that. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have uh, Maggie, the haunted doll from Post Town School that was given to uh, Jessica as a birthday present. And then we have uh, Belle from the, the Bell family farm that we got there. And then we have uh, the no-eyed doll down there. She was given to us by a, a, a lady who um, basically stated she did not want the doll in her house. She felt that it carried bad energy with it. Uh, and then just various other items in here. <laughs> This staircase is where a lot of paranormal teams and Jessica and myself and even our event company while well, we've done a couple events here, uh, there seems to be a lot of activity on this staircase. We hear children running up and down the stairs. I know one time um, there was a balloon. We had a glow balloon and it was sitting at the top of the stairs. It started in the hall and it gradually, there's no fans, no kind of air movement at all. And so the balloon started gradually getting closer and closer to the top of the steps. And we're sitting down here and we can see on our, on our cameras. Mm -hmm. And so we said, just move it off the steps. If you know, if you can get it that far, just kick it on off there. And sure enough, that balloon come rolling on down the steps. Okay, so up here at the top uh, landing, this, this seems to be a, a very active location. Most of the teams that have come in here notice that this area seems to be a very active area. We don't exactly know why. Yeah. Um, there were some reports that we heard from people and we couldn't verify them on paper that at one point during the history of the house, a child did fall down the staircase and perish, but records were not as well kept back in those days in the 1800s. So we can't verify that, but it would kind of make sense to the activity that we hear and that others hear up here, which is children uh, at the stop, top of the staircase and on the staircase. So not really sure, but uh, it kind of puts two and two together. This part behind me, this used to be like a sitting area. They had a huge bookcase here and uh, they had several chairs and people would just sit up here and kind of lounge, look out the window. Um, it's also an area, this top floor, where people from the road over the years have reported seeing a woman. Yeah. They would see this curtain actually Move moving back. open and like someone just constantly fiddling around with, with the, the curtain. curtains and stuff. And, and a lot of people on. say it was a woman wearing like a white gown. A white gown, a lady standing a up here lady. in a white gown, they would ask, you know, is anyone staying in there or something? Because we keep seeing somebody move around. We're like, no, it was closed during that time or no one's home or whatever mm -hmm. the situation was. So it's kind of interesting to hear that fact from a lot of the townspeople. Um, but that's pretty much all that happens in this area. So this is uh, Asher and Julia Walton's room. We know that historically, and we know that this room was made specifically so Asher could see his businesses. Uh, he was a very distinguished businessman. They were a very big Christian family in the area. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, originally the house had a slate roof with white crosses in, uh, across the entire roof, uh, which was very unique. Uh, the house was probably one of the largest homes, they say, in the state of Indiana for about 40 years. So he had a lot of businessmen that would come visit them here. Uh, and it's said, and it's actually in the, in the historical documents that on full moons, uh, they would have a secret meeting yes. with only the men and the women weren't even allowed in the home. Yeah. So a uh, little bit odd. We looked into that a little bit. We think it might have possibly been uh, Masonic temple related uh, because they used to do like the, the, some kind of ceremony on full moons. So we're not sure what that was about. There's not a lot of documentation on it, but we know they did have secret meetings here on the full moon, which is pretty unique. This room used to be the nursery, uh, which was very common back in the day. They had a housekeeper that would come up the back staircase, which we'll get to here in a minute, come in a side door, go into the nursery and take care of the children. Uh, Asher and Julia would go about their business and not really have to be concerned about taking care of the children. It was done in a separate room. Now, uh, they've converted it some years ago to a walk-in closet. This room, uh, we hear a lot of things and I, I can't even, uh, the paranormal teams, yes. uh, us when we stay here, we're working here. This room is just nonstop things happening, sounds coming from. She said- I was actually oh. hanging up some clothes in the closet one day and I looked down because something catches my eye and it's one of those wooden rods. So it, the hangers don't really move very well on them but I looked down at the very end on the other side and a hanger is just flinging back and forth. And like, it, it, it freaked me out, I took off running. But I mean, it's just very unusual movements when you least expect it, things begin to happen in there. Yeah, we've had things like fly off shelves, we've had boxes. Uh, in the middle of the night, we'll just hear some bang, we'll open the door and a box that was clear over on that side will be laying over here in the middle of the floor. So uh, kind, of a, kind of a unique, room. So we'll move down the hall. So this room was like the help's quarters at one time when they didn't have indoor plumbing, obviously back in 1872, they had an outhouse out back and they actually had an enclosed walkway that went out the back of the house over to a carriage house. And then it went straight into a covered outdoor latrine. When they put in the first restroom, this is where it was put. Yeah. This was their first bathroom that was put in. This is the original tub. It's the original tub from uh, 1928 is when they put in their first bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, this is the original uh, clawfoot or barefoot tub. A lot of people believe they see a, like a stately gentleman with a beard um, standing over in this particular corner staring out the window. Um, there has been uh, some psychics that we know through our event company that have done a uh, walkthrough, a virtual walkthrough, and felt like the person that stands in here is Mr. Walton himself, and that he's guarding something in this area. We don't know what that is for sure, uh, but they said he definitely stands at that window, actually right behind where you're standing with the camera. He stands and stares out that window quite often. Some of the teams that have been in here have also reported seeing apparitions either standing in this doorway or walking around in this room and they hear them walking on this hardwood floor in here. I know that we have uh, several times when we've stayed the night here, uh, we've gone to bed with this door open and we woke up with, with this door closed. closed. <laughs> so one of the stories in here, we have a crew member of Paranormal Dares that was staying the night and he had come down and to go to the restroom. You know, everything was normal. He goes back upstairs. That was maybe what, two o'clock? So two a couple hours later, comes back down again and notices that this door is standing wide open. And so he's automatically on alert. You know, someone's came in the house, you know, what's going on? And so he's looking around and then he goes straight upstairs, wakes us up and the guys are in here looking and we, roll back the security footage and on the footage you can hear the door unlatching 
the knock rattling and the door flies open. Yeah, I mean, with it just force. Flies so open. much so it broke the glass on the door. Yeah. Uh, now show them the outside door. How yes, it was this locked. is this door was actually latched, so like it doesn't open. We latch it at night, and um, yeah, somehow the door just open, flung open, and it was open for hours while we slept. Two hours, and then after when we actually reviewed the security footage, you could hear multiple voices or voice tone: a man, a woman, maybe a third person all either arguing or talking. It was very hard to make out. All right, everybody, Indy and I have traveled to Atlanta, Indiana, and tonight we are here at the Asher Walton House. India, are you excited about tonight's investigation? I'm excited. This is such a classic looking haunted house. You just see it from the outside and like it has to have a ghost. There's no yeah. way it doesn't have a ghost. Just walking in the house, it's just so beautiful. It's from 1868. We got an awesome tour from Keith and Jess earlier, and I'm super excited to see what we captured tonight. Uh, I know last night we stayed the night here and you were actually uh, not with me and Keith and Jess were uh, downstairs watching TV and I was upstairs shooting some b-roll shots and I heard some knocking that I thought was actually the owner and turns out that this is a common thing that goes on here so it's a creepy house I'm excited to investigate. It is cold out it's here. It's really cold. Let's go in and get warm. Even yeah. though it's not going to be that warm but let's still go in and get warm. Yeah. All right, are you ready for this? Yes. Let's go. For our investigation at the Asher Walton house, Indy and I felt it was a great idea to begin upstairs, as this is where the majority of activity takes place. The stairs definitely look scarier in the dark, I'll tell you that. Okay, here we go. Oh my god, it's so deathly quiet up here. This is a good shot of your bum. You like my bum? <laughs> oh my god, you should see the hallway right now. My heart's like beating a moment. That was an hour. It's creepy. This hallway is creepy. Okay. So right now... Oh! I, that might have just been you walking. What? The door. I think that was just the way you walked. You heard a noise? Yeah, like somebody push on it, but I think it was... Probably walking it's, on It the... is, it's the floorboards like that. Okay, so India, why, why are we going in the closet right now? Uh, we're going in the closet because it was the nursery and there's said to be a little boy in here in suspenders. So we're gonna go see if we can communicate with him. All right. All right, if there's anyone here, my name is India and this is Connor. And we just would like to talk with you tonight, if that's okay. We know that some children were in here that stayed in this room. We got a little red light looking thing down there on the floor. It's a little toy that makes pretty lights, pretty colors. If you go near that, it will light up and make all kinds of cool noises. 
It will also let us know that you're in this room with us. Walk near that light. It will let us know that you're in here. Can you do that for us? We know that Jess said that she was in here one time and you made a coat hanger sway really crazy in that rack over there. Is there any way you can do that for us or even knock it off? Make a noise in here? What are we about to do right now? We are getting ready to do a portal session, uh, which is something that we either have a ton of luck with or we have no luck at all. So it could go either way. So we'll give it a go and see what happens. What was the name of the person or persons that helped take care of the children in here? Can I know your name? You used, to, you used to walk through this doorway, right? What was that? Memory, maybe? Hello? Can you hear our voices? I need you to talk as loud as you can. That was a woman with a... I'll say. Is that what she said? Yeah. I'll say. Who just spoke just now? I said, I'll say. Something's here. Yeah, I heard something. Here. Who's here? Did somebody try to scare Jess? Did somebody try to scare Jess when she was in here? Who moved the hanger? Are we speaking with Julia? What do you think about Keith? Do you like Keith and Jess? Do any of the children still run up and down the halls? Something in my house. I heard that in my house. Are we in your house? How many spirits are in this house? Seven. Are any of the Walton family still here? I need you to be a little bit clearer. What was that? With no further voices coming through the portal, 
We decided to move down the hall to the bathroom where the maids of the Walton family once resided, and an apparition has been seen looking out the window. After capturing no evidence, we continued our investigation downstairs with an Estes method. All right, so right now I am in uh, one of the main rooms of the house. This is the art room, and India is in the other room. We're doing the Estes method, where India is wearing noise canceling headphones, listening to the spirit box. I'm going to be asking questions, and we're going to see if any of my questions correlates to what she responds to on the spirit box. Here we go. Here. Get off of me. Who's on you? That's a car going by. It sounds like you're in a fight. Who are you fighting with? Can you go in there and speak through India and tell me how many spirits are in the house? Are you upstairs? They said there used to be one. Is the Walton family still here? Yes or no? He says. He says what? Keith. Keith? Do you like it, what Keith and Jess are doing? Keith. Who's speaking right now? It was a laugh, it went, <laughs> Is that a child that's talking right now? Keith. Why do you keep saying the name? Cameras. Oh, you see cameras? Nope. Back and forth. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> What are you saying there, India? Cute couple. Who's a cute couple? All right, I'm stopping. Okay, she's stopping. India. Yeah. I needed to inform India about how she kept saying Keith's name. This led us to bring Keith and Jess in for our paranormal investigation. We had to see if whoever or whatever was calling out to Keith would communicate with him. We are now being joined by Keith and Jess from Paranormal Dares and I wanted to bring them in because something keeps asking for you Keith. It really likes you apparently. <laughs> so we're gonna see if uh, we can get it to to come out whatever's here. Yeah, Keith, when you were outside and India and I just did the Estes method, I actually saw you outside and it responded, corresponded to what India was saying on the Estes method. So it was really, really strange. That's that, awesome. I felt well, like we had to bring you in. Hopefully uh, it'll be friendly and they'll like me. All right, well, why don't you guys say, let's go upstairs and uh, take a walk and right. see what we can feel about yeah, this place. Absolutely. 
very ominous. Oh, oh we're going to walk more? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Hello, we're back. We bought some friends. Hello, it's Jess. It's Keith. You kept calling for Keith. Do you like Keith being here? Sounds like a distant shout. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is anybody here with us? The temperature changing yeah. again. I'm out here in the hallway. Keith. Keith, I heard it. Said Keith. I thought, yeah. Help. What, how can we help you? Who were we speaking to earlier? There's, some, there's a man that keeps laughing. What are you laughing at? Notice how the voices have calmed down a little bit. Yeah. Did you just hear something? Yeah. Like in the distance? Yeah. Like, I don't know where. I don't know where either. I heard it too. It didn't come out of the box. I said Edward. <gasps> oh, it's Edward. There you are. Thank you. You're doing such a good job. Do that one more time. You're getting it. Whatever you're doing, you're getting it. If you get even closer, the lights will start going off different colors. Who made that light up out there? What? What? <laughs> After parting ways with Keith and Jess, we attempted to recreate the balloon moving down the stairs by using the same type of weighted balloon shown in the video captured by the Asher Walton house. Other than a REM pod sensing some temperature changes, we had no luck and proceeded to try an investigation technique we had never done before. Yeah, so this is the human pendulum and I'm just going to move based on if I feel the need to move, I guess, if I feel something move me, I'm going to try and stay as still as I can. I don't know if this is gonna work, we've never done this before, but. All right, show me what yes means. She's 
understand what no means. Mr. Asher here. His wife Julia here. Are there little kids here? Do you like India? Are you following India? Are you following us? Are you in this room with us? Do you like it here? Try not to fall over. Do you know where you are? Do you live here? No. Are you just passing through? Can you push Connor all the way back? Can you push him forwards? Upstairs. Yes. Um, I just had a thought. Coming from upstairs. And it wasn't them outside because I, just, I can see the door and they, they didn't come out. Are you moving those little wheels?
push cover all the way forward. As hard as you can. Pushing forward. Pushing forward. Pushing forwards as hard as you can. Pushing forwards. That is so strange. Yeah. No, my back is so sore. You want to know something though? I heard a thud upstairs. Really? Yeah, it, it must be on the audio. Here, I gotta stop this or turn this down. I thought it was them because it was quite loud and oh. I looked and I couldn't see him. My back is killing me. I heard it. It feels like, like I have weight on my back right now. To conclude the night, we broke out the portal once more for a final session in the dining room. What we would end up capturing left us both feeling a little spooked. I'm scared? Is that what I said? Huh? I think I heard that. Yeah, I heard I'm scared? What are you scared of? Was that my mum? Mum? That sounded like a... Can we tell your story tonight? What is it that about this house that you're here for? Why are you here? Is it because you lived here? Because it was important? Or this Wait, was important? what the hell? Did you hear that? A child? That wasn't, that didn't come from there. Did you hear that? Oh. That was a child talking. That did not come from that box. Hello? Because it was important. Because it was important. I've got chills in my body right now. Isn't the closet up there? Like these vents, don't they go up to the... Oh, India can, yeah. They go up to the nursery. Yeah. Oh my god, my, I'm getting changed my whole body right now. That was a child's voice. <sighs> With accounts of ghostly figures in the windows, strange security camera footage, and the voices of small children seemingly crying out from thin air, the Asher Walton house certainly has a lot to offer for those looking to experience a haunting. Each of its 16 rooms have their own story to tell, and the many years of life and memories can still be felt from the minute you step through the front door. Our night of investigating leaves us wondering if some of the long-deceased souls who once lived here still consider this Victorian mansion to be their home. <laughs>